All right, here are solutions for perfect problem five for math 213. Uh, what's going on here is you have a sphere inside of a cube inside of a sphere. So you kind of have this small sphere. And then you have this cube. And then you have this large, or at least larger sphere. Um, in your small sphere, you're told that the diameter of the sphere is one foot. Um, so if you know that the volume of a sphere is equal to four-thirds times pi times the radius cubed, um, if the diameter is one foot, the radius is half the diameter, uh, so the radius would be half a foot. So you get four-thirds times pi times one-half cubed. Um, and one-half cubed turns out to be one-eighth, and so you can end up getting probably pull out a calculator, but uh, this ends up simplifying to pi over six, which is your volume here. Uh, you can pull out a calculator if you want a decimal approximation for that. I probably should at some point, but for now I'm gonna leave that like that. That's the volume of my small sphere, just based on the fact that the diameter is one. Uh, if you're trying to figure out the volume of the cube, it's a little bit harder. The volume of the cube, well, if we knew any side length, all you have to do is cube the length of a side. You think about it as length times width times height, um, but since in a cube, the length is the same as the width, which is the same as the height. They're all equal to one side length. You just say it's S cubed. Uh, but okay, this is where things get a little bit tricky. Because I don't know a side length. Or do I? Actually, I think I do. Um, so if you can picture a sphere inside this cube, inside this cube, um, it would be tangent at kind of the midpoint, the center of each of these different faces. Uh, so the line going from the center of one face, maybe I can draw this in. So the line going from, I don't know, right here on the center of this face to right here on the center of this face, if I connected those guys with a straight line, uh, the length of that line right there would be the same as the diameter of the sphere, which I was told is exactly one. Um, so if that's one, what that means is any side length is one. You can kind of take this and move it down here. Um, so the volume it ends up just being one cubed, and one cubed just ends up being one. So the volume of this cube is just one. Okay, uh, what about the large sphere? So here's where things get a little bit more difficult. Um, I don't know how well I can draw this. But what you have to do is imagine this cube inside of a sphere. And the point that I want you to see, maybe I'll even uh, draw it here. Yeah, that's not going to go well. Uh, is that the cube would be, at, at the corners of the cube, it would be tangent with the sphere. Another way of saying that is the diagonal of the cube is the same as the diameter, diameter, that almost says diameter, diameter of the large sphere. I should write large because I have two different spheres. Um, and that's because, as I mentioned, all of these corners are tangent to the sphere. So the sphere kind of touches right here and it touches right here. And those points would be opposite each other on the sphere. So the distance from here to here would end up being the diameter of the sphere. Uh, there is a challenge in calculating the length of the diagonal. So to figure out the length of a diagonal, we're going to need kind of three dimensions. So let me draw another cube here. And maybe I'll label some points this time. So you can pick any two vertices that are uh, opposite each other. What I'm going to do is kind of this front guy in the bottom left to this back guy um, in the top right. Maybe I call this one A and I call this one B. And I think the hint that I gave you in class is to introduce another point right here. Maybe we'll call this C. And think about what you know about this cube. First of all, the length of any of the sides is just one. So the distance from B to C is one. The distance from 
C to D is one, the distance from A to D is one. And what I now have are a bunch of right triangles. If I wanna calculate the distance from A to D, I can say the distance from A to D squared. Uh, sorry, I wanna calculate the distance from A to C. I know the distance from A to D already is one. Um, the distance from A to D squared plus the distance from D to C squared ends up being equal to the distance from A to C squared. And the reason that's true is because I have this right triangle down here on the bottom of my cube. It's hard to see in three dimensions, but you got that right triangle right there. Um, so I know that this is one squared, which is one, and one squared, which is one, and that's equal to the length of AC squared. So I have that the length of AC is equal to the square root of two. 2 equals AC squared, so AC equals the square root of 2. So I have this distance right here, which is 2. Um, and what I now want you to see, and this is a little bit tricky, is I have another right triangle. And this right triangle connects the points A, B, and C. So maybe I can draw this line right next to the green one. Maybe that was a bad idea. If it's dotted so you can see the green and the red. I don't know. Got this right triangle right here. Right, it goes along the base of the cube and then kind of up the back. If I could figure out this length, I would know the length of the diagonal. And since you recognize that it's a right triangle, I can use Pythagorean's theorem again. Um, so the two legs of my right triangle are AC, which I already figured out was root two. So I got AC squared plus BC squared. And that's equal to what I'm looking for, AB squared. Um, a, C, I figured out uh, was the square root of 2, and the square root of 2 squared is just 2. Uh, B, C is a side length, which is just 1, and 1 squared is 1. And then I got A, B, should I write the square root of 2 squared? Sure. Square root of 2 squared plus 1 squared equals this thing I'm looking for, A, B squared. So 2 plus 1 more gives me 3. So what that tells me is the length of AB is the square root of 3. Turns out there's a three-dimensional version of the Pythagorean theorem. That if I knew this were 1 and this were 1 and this were 1, I could have said this squared plus this squared plus this squared is equal to the square root of this guy. I didn't need to do this intermediate step, but you'd need to know this kind of three-dimensional version of the Pythagorean theorem, which I have not taught you in this class. So for our purposes, we had to draw kind of two different triangles to come up with this that a, b is equal to the square root of three. So what? What does that tell you? Well, remember that this right here, the square root of three, is the diameter of the large sphere. So I know the diameter of the large sphere, so this tells me, so the radius of the large sphere is half of this, the square root of three divided by two. And therefore, the volume of the large sphere is 4 thirds times pi times this radius, root 3 over 2. Ah, that's not a 2. Cubed. That's not a 3. Man, writing is hard. Um, so if you simplify this a little bit, you can get, uh, let's see, I guess that, hmm, what's the easiest way to do this? Okay, root 3 over 2 cubed is, let's write this out. Let's show you all the math here. 4 thirds, the square root of 3 cubed is the square root of 3 times the square root of 3 times the square root of 3. And 2 cubed is 2 times 2 times 2. And then, oh yeah, I still have this pi hanging out here. But the square root of 3 times the square root of 3 is just 3. So I have 4 times 3 times the square root of 3 over pi. And in the denominator, I got a 3. 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. But I'm going to write that as 4 times 2. And the reason I'm going to do that is then these 4s will cancel and these 2s will cancel. And I'll get root 3 pi over 2. So the volume of my large sphere is root 3 pi over 2. Uh, the volume of my small sphere is pi over 6. So if I wanted to know what percent of the area, sorry, volume of the large sphere is made up by the small sphere, or I guess the beer that was in the small sphere, what I would do is I would take, for my answer, I would take this pi over 6, 
And I would divide that by this root 3 pi over 2. Um, and if you can deal with fractions inside of fractions, this will end up simplifying. The pi's will cancel out. Um, and I will have a 2 on the top and a 6 root 3 down on the bottom, which ends up is 1 over 3 root 3, which I guess you could rationalize and you could call it the square root of 3 over 9. Maybe I'll say or either of these guys. But you're like, yeah, we didn't do either of those. You didn't ask us to express the exact answer. You asked us to come up with the percentage. Um, and we've been kind of rounding stuff like that in this class. So you probably figured these numbers out a long time ago um, and rounded them off. And if you rounded them off, you would get uh, the same answer. I'm going to type it into my calculator now. The square root of 3 divided by 9. And that ends up giving me about 19%. This equals 0.19245 or 19.245%. And so I'll call that good as my answer.